Hello, welcome to part one of our lecture video series for Monday, May 8th, where we begin our discussion about vapor pressure. So to start us off, I am going to make a statement here. So I've said that for liquids in a closed system, meaning like if I've got a liquid in a jar or a sealed beaker or just any kind of closed vessel, that liquid will establish a phase equilibrium with itself specifically a phase equilibrium that exists between the liquid and gaseous states of state of that phase at some temperature. And while this might seem like a lot of words, because it is, uh, you've actually probably all seen this before in your everyday life. Like if you were to leave your water bottle in your car, or outside for some amount of time. What you'll notice is that over time passing, there is a thermal equilibrium that is achieved between this liquid phase, your water bottle, and then the gaseous phase. So why is that? Like, why is it that you see little drops of condensation all over your water bottle after some time passes? Like, where did that come from? So this is liquid water on the walls of your bottle that was not there before. And it's not like the bottle's been jostled around, so it's not as a result, result of splashing. You've just like set it on a table, walked away, and come back over some time. So the reason why this happens is, again, because we have a phase equilibrium that is set up between the liquid and its gaseous phase because we're in a closed system, meaning that there's going to be this constant exchange of molecules going from the gas phase to the liquid phase. This is called condensation. And then from the liquid phase to the gas phase, which we call vaporization. So here's how you can kind of think about this. We know from kinetic molecular theory, at least, that gases are in this constant high energy state, right? These gas particles have a large degree of kinetic energy, which is allowing them to move and collide and thus exert pressure, yada, yada. So that idea of molecular motion is also true for liquids. So if you can imagine from the perspective of what's going on inside your water bottle, You've got your liquid molecules that are swirling and twirling and dancing around one another. And then by chance, since we're in a closed environment, by chance, one of those molecules meets this boundary between the liquid and the headspace above our liquid. And it says, well, uh, the language we have to use here is it escapes up into the vapor phase. So if I've got some particle of liquid water and it finally meets this boundary here, it will boo, escape up into the vapor phase. It will vaporize. So again, this idea is like moving, encounter this boundary, and then now we're in the gas phase. And now that happens in the reverse as well. So I can have my gas phase particle, which is moving super, super fast. Statistically, it'll encounter that boundary between our liquid phase and our gas phase, and then go back down, condense back down into the liquid phase. And this happens over and over and over and over again, and again, a phase equilibrium that is, a st uh, that is established or set up. And the amount of vaporization that you see is going to depend on your temperature, right? So how much condensation observed, this depends on temperature because the amount of condensation is due to there being gaseous particles that then recondense on the cold side walls. Okay, so we will call vapor pressure 
pvape because what pvape is is now that we've got our water bottle and it's closed up nice and tight so that there is a closed system that allows our phase equilibrium to be established at whatever temperature our system's at we will have both liquid water and gaseous water in this constant kind of exchange back and forth back and forth between vaporization and condensation so since we have particles that are up here in this region of our system we have a gas that occupies some volume in a closed container that means that that gas exerts pressure so we call the gas that the vapor found or collected above a liquid in a closed system or a closed container the vapor pressure or p vape of that liquid so you may have heard and you certainly will hear this in your future classes like ochem but you may have heard this idea of volatility so define a volatile liquid so if someone like just thinking about where we've heard this word volatile before if someone themselves is volatile that means that they're unstable so it's not really like a question of like true energetic stability here but it means that when we're talking about a volatile liquid that is a substance that tends to not stay in the liquid phase so volatile liquids are liquids that tend to favor vaporization in the phase equilibrium set up in a more or less closed system. So if they favor vaporization, this means that they are more readily able to vaporize. And if we have more vapor particles or gas particles, that are in the vapor phase in some space above a liquid, then we're going to have a higher pressure. So volatile liquids have high vapor pressures at room temperature. This is why, for example, if you were to leave, I don't know, a cup full of water or halfway full of water and a cup halfway full of acetone and place a paper towel over the top of each, uh, like on some bench and then walk away, you would come back to notice that the acetone had actually decreased in quantity, the liquid acetone, because it has a higher vapor pressure than water at room temperature meaning that more of its liquid molecules escaped up into the vapor phase and thus exerted a higher vapor pressure. But because that paper towel allowed things to be a little permeable, we technically lost that acetone into the atmosphere. This is also why things like gasoline smell, right? Volatile liquids are things that tend to have a really pungent odor because they have those gaseous particles already present in the vapor phase right above that liquid layer. So 
Vapor pressure, again, is the pressure that a gas that is formed above a liquid at some temperature in equilibrium between those two phases exerts in the headspace above that liquid in our closed system. So that's vapor pressure. We're gonna have to consider vapor pressure when we do gas phase experiments, like actually in the lab from this point moving forward, um, especially if we're doing those gas phase experiments in any kind of container. Uh, if we are not telling you, we if I am not telling you that vapor pressure is a thing you need to worry about, then you don't. But if I mention anything about the vapor pressure of a substance, that means you have to account for the fact that there's vapor pressure present in your system, meaning some liquid is in your system that's also contributing gas to your system, which is going to affect all of your gas considerations like gas stoichiometry calculations, your ideal gas law calculations, your uh, calculations of pressure, things like that. So coming up next in video two, we are going to look at the Clausius-Clapeyron equation, which describes the relationship between temperature and vapor pressure. So how is it that this phase equilibrium is affected by temperature? So that will be part two of today's video series.